Good evening. We will now begin the public hearing. Today is Wednesday, February 1st, 2023, and the time is 6.02 p.m. My name is Sophia LaFrance Brooks, and I will be the tonight's hearing officer. Tonight's public hearing provides the public with an opportunity to comment on the MTA's change to customer booth service at stations and coverage during the agent meal breaks. This hearing is an opportunity for the members of the public to comment on the proposal. This hearing is being live streamed and recorded and will be available publicly on the MTA YouTube channel and the station booth webpage at new.mta.info forward slash transparency forward slash station hyphen booth hyphen hearing. Card captioning and in-person American Sign Language interpreters are available at today's hearing. For our virtual attendees to turn on card captioning, please use the CC button on the bottom of the screen. Sign language interpreters will appear on the screen for all attendees. To hear the translated audio, use the interpretation button on the bottom of the screen. We are conducting this hearing in a hybrid format, both in person and virtually via Zoom and conference call feature with a live stream available through the website at new.mta.info forward slash transparency forward slash station hyphen booth hyphen hearing. Please note that each speaker is limited to two minutes. We ask that speakers keep their remarks to the two minute time frame out of respect for all other speakers. As a reminder, we ask that all public speakers adhere to the MTA's rule of conduct and, conduct and decorum. Please note that a transcript of this hearing will be made and a copy will be provided to each MTA board member. We will now start with opening remarks from New York City Transit Department of Subways Executive Vice President for Customer Environment and Facilities, Jim Compton. Thank you, Sophia. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jim Compton. I am the Executive Vice President, Customer Environment and Facilities within the Department of Subways at New York City Transit. I would like to welcome you to this public hearing. I will begin with a prepared statement, which, would, which will become part of this hearing's public record. As background, currently each subway station or station complex, also referred to as a station, has at least one booth that is staffed 24 hours per day, seven days per week. The limited exception is that five stations on the five line in the Bronx, East Chester, Dyer Avenue, Bay Chester Avenue, Gun Hill Road, Pelham Parkway, and Morris Park are currently staffed 16 hours per day and will continue to be staffed on that schedule. Historically, Services provided from station booths included the sale or replenishment of fare media. But that service was discontinued during the COVID pandemic and will not be resumed. As a result, services currently provided from booths by station agents are limited to providing customer information, such as about how to use the transit system and to provide assistance to customers who are not able to use the turnstiles or auto gate. Presently, station agents are limited in the services they can provide because they can only provide services from booths. The proposal that is subject to this public hearing is the reduction or elimination of station booth service throughout the subway system, including the elimination of station booth lunch relief. The services that are currently provided from station booths would instead be provided by station agents working in the station but outside of the booths. Moving station agents outside of the booths would enable them to provide a broader range of customer service functions throughout the station, such as providing assistance at turnstiles at MetroCard and Omni vending machines and on platforms. Station agents would return to the fare array area as necessary to provide assistance to customers who are not able to use the turnstiles or auto gate. 
each station in which booth service is reduced or eliminated shall continue to be staffed by a minimum of one station agent per day, 24 hours per day, seven days per week, or 16 hours per day for the five Bronx stations previously mentioned, except during the period of the station agent lunch breaks. The proposal to reduce or eliminate station agent service service includes the elimination of the practice of providing a lunch relief station agent. Information would be provided in stations about how to obtain assistance during those periods, such, such as by using a help point intercom. The reduction or elimination of station booth service and the elimination of station booth lunch relief is proposed to begin in early 2023. It is now I will now turn it back to our hearing officer, Sophia LaFrance Brooks. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. I should emphasize public comments, including spoken comments today, all correspondence and emails will be transcribed and incorporated into the official record and distributed to every board member. The MTA has conducted a community involvement and public information effort to encourage customers comment at this hearing. To make the public aware of this hearing, advertisements were published in eight print media outlets, multilingual posters, digital and social media assets. Notice of this hearing was also posted on the MTA website along with multilingual translations. The MTA representatives attending this public hearing are here to listen to your comments. No responses will be provided today. There are nine in-person speakers registered. Speakers will be called in the order they signed up. If you join the Zoom under a name that is different from the one you used when you signed up to speak, please identify yourself in the Q&A function with the name you used when you signed up. When you are called on to speak, there will be a brief transition on the screen. Please make sure that once the screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled before beginning your remarks. You will be able to unmute and enable your camera until it's your turn to speak. Please remain patient until then. In the event you miss your name being called, you will be called we will call the list one more time after all speakers in attendance have been called the first time. By participating in this public hearing, you are consenting to be recorded. Please be aware that there will be an auditory and visual cue to remind you that you have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. Thank you for your patience and understanding throughout this in-person and virtual public comment session. Our first speaker is Kenneth Murray, followed by Joseph Morales. Can you hear me? Yes. Service and safety is what the MTA says, but putting station agents in harm's way to deal with an out of control society in the subways is showing a true indifference to the safety of the workers. Station agents have already been threatened. I'll say that again. Station agents have already been threatened. Once you come out of the booth, then you will be harmed. They've already been threatened. Now, transit workers are clear. We did not come here to work to get assaulted. Now, I know that the mayor and the governor have given us assurance to the fact that the subway system is becoming safe. But I want you to hear me and hear me well. I am from the station's department, and we believe that it is better to be judged by 12 than to be carried by six. Thank you. The next speaker is Joseph Morales, followed by Joseph Gonzalez. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, 
I'm here today to speak on my concerns about the change in the role of station agents. Um, my biggest concern is the station's lunch and relief break. If certain stations are not going to be staffed during that time, you're basically saying that they're going to have to use help points. And these help points, I've talked to multiple station agents tonight, they're not known to be the most reliable. So if a customer needs assistance for something that you need a human for, like to help get a Metro card, it may be pretty tough for you to do that. Um, and also, what should we call it? Like, there's also, if there's an emergency at the station, the station agents, they have the ability to see something, and if a customer is panicking or something, be able to call 911 and describe the scene. But over a help point, you know, the best that a um, the rail control center could do is send somebody and hope for the best. And if it's not, you know, if EMS, if whoever, whatever responders come do not have the resources to respond, that could cost somebody a life. Um, my other big concern is how will passengers in the mezzanine get help if station agents are walking around on the platform or vice versa. You mentioned if somebody, that the station agents would return to the fare control area if somebody needs help to use Autogate. Well, let me use Pelham Parkway station on the five line. Dyer Avenue line is an example. If, actually no, there's no auto gate there, but I'm just, let's say if there was, because stations are like this. If somebody comes through, there's no way a, someone in a wheelchair is yelling to the platform to get the agent up to help them get into the train station. Also, please conclude. Um, you know, when you have MetroCard, uh, someone needs any form of help. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm kind of under pressure a little bit. There's no way you're yelling down there. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Joseph Gonzalez, followed by Mr. X. Good evening, MTA panelists. My name is Joe Gonzalez, and I'm a lifelong New Yorker and a lifelong public transit rider. I'm unhappy that my taxes are being wasted tonight with this public hearing when the MTA has already put out in writing that it's a done deal. So we're led to believe that this is something still under consideration. These flyers that are on the wall outside said you cut the deal with the, with the uh, Transport Workers Union. So that makes this hearing and all everyone's presence here a waste of time. Moving right along, um, the, the deal they struck with the MTA, I'm sorry, with the uh, Transport Workers Union, is they're going to keep on the public payroll some 2,000 soon-to-be obsolete transit booth clerks at a cost of $100 million a year. MTA plans to take these clerks out of the booth, as the earlier speaker mentioned, jeopardizing their safety if they're perceived to be someone relative to the revenue question, which is one of the most volatile issues in this city. The earlier speaker was correct. Their personal safety is in jeopardy. Okay, we've already seen that. To be sure, if once these clerks are pulled out, we can make book that those booths and the Metro card machines will be vandalized, costing taxpayers more money. I have a better idea. Deliver free public transport 98 cities around the world now have free subways and buses. Last month, Washington, D.C. I want the same time that he got. 98 cities offer free public transport, and last month, Washington, D.C. announced their buses and subways will be free. It's time to make New York 100. You can shrink the bureaucracy, okay? You eliminate the booths. You end booth ro you eliminate you, booth robberies, end fare evasion, fraud. Untold numbers of booth clerks and transit cops have been killed in these booth robberies. Thank you, sir. It's not fair. Everyone has to have two minutes. The next speaker is Mr. X, followed by Christopher Greif. To Sophie, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to phone you and your husband, Adrian. We need to go upstairs earlier on public hearing day. If, it's, if the public hearing is against us at 6 p.m., we should go upstairs at 5, not 5.30. 
And we're going to this, the booths. There should be booths by every station, by every platform. Keep the agents inside them. There's no need to remove them from the booths. You got many employees that could assist them, many employees that aren't doing anything. Why don't you consider doing that? It's for their safety. Okay, and regarding the station that's up by the fire train via the diner branch, those booths should be open 24 7. And my understanding was when they're closed during nighttime hours, the gates are supposed to remain open, and there were times when they weren't years ago. So either if you close them before 9 p.m., leave the gates open on both sides all night, not to confuse all night, all night, Lionel Richie, or staff them at all times. There's no excuse for that because people ride the fire train at all times. During nighttime hours, you're going to ride between Dyer Avenue and 1A Street, which is a joke. You can get the two train to cover that portion. Okay, and I just heard it. This was a what you just this here. This is a done deal. Why is it a done deal? Please conclude. It appears every time you have an agenda, it's a done deal. Every time you hold a public hearing, it's a done deal. Every time you have a board meeting, it's a done deal. What's with these done deals? Hello. Done deals without consulting us. Are you serious? Does AMT stand for a Metropolitan Transfer Authority or does it stand for money thrown away? That's what I'd like to know. Thank you. The next speaker is Christopher Greif, followed by Charles Muniz. Good evening. I'm Christopher D. Greif, and forgive me if my face and voice is a little different because I have L. palsy, so please forgive me my words. Um, regarding the I, am, I understand a lot of frustration everyone has, but at the same time, we got to work on safety for the, the booths at the same time, but we also need to make sure that the seniors and people with disabilities are getting the help to make sure they can energize the future Omnicard and the reduced here Metro card, which is very important as well. At the same time, we definitely need to work together with the law enforcement, NYPD, and MTA police at major other stations to make sure that safety is safe on any part of the platform and the mezzanine. And regarding the five line, it is very important that Gun Hill Road Station has help because that is a major hub transfer connection to a bus to Co-op City to the number five train. Yes, the five runs as a shuttle but it still helps seniors and people with disabilities to get on and off if they're going to their doctor's appointment early in the morning or coming back from a late event or a Yankee game or baseball or Knicks game. Let's make sure that we work together of getting better safety transportation. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Char Munez, followed by virtual speaker Skyla Hope. Good evening, my name is Charles Mines. I'm an MTA employee and a member of TWU Local 100. It, it is an outrage that this agency wants station agents out of the booth. This is an attempt to eliminate the station agent position and disguise it as a way to benefit customers. This agency removed money from the booths affecting the poor, the elderly, the handicapped, et cetera, and caused them to blame and take out their anger as station agents. Mm -hmm. By eliminating the lunch relief jobs and going this route, I have heard that it will save the MTA about five, to $10 million a year. Can you believe that? At the same time, they are paying unarmed security guards a million dollars a month. How about the 3.3 million per year on Wi-Fi for buses? Did, did that go, go well? No, it didn't. How about the 30 million spent on a staircase in Times Square? And what about the whopping $371 million spent on contractors to do disinfecting while you have cleaners in-house who could have done the job? Those are just some examples of the wasteful spending and wonderful decisions by this know-it-all but an up, no at all upper heads. Crime is at a 40 year high, transit workers are assaulted daily, and this agency has the goal to push station agents outside the booth without a plan. The agents are sitting ducks. No plan to secure their safety when they are outside the booths, none. The homeless, the criminals, the junkies will have a field day. Our agents will be targets of verbal and physical assaults, rape, robberies, and even murder. But why should the folks who made this decision care? You suits don't wear the orange vest 
or deal with the daily going ons in the subway system. Let me leave you with this. If someone is victimized or suffers because of your stupid decisions, then I hope you have regrets and nightmares the rest of your life. Because those that made this decision, yes, you are responsible for what happens to my coworkers. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Skyla Hope, followed by Mimi Tong. The next speaker is Mimi Tong. Hello? Do you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Mimi Tong. Uh, the subway entrances that don't have booths anymore are much more dangerous. There's much more crime. You have a lot of junkies and homeless people. And uh, I had a stabbing at my station just a couple of weeks ago at 53rd Street in Sunset Park at the entrance that doesn't have a booth anymore. The MTA took the cash transactions out of the booths before we were ready for Omni. We still don't have the Omni vending machine, and it's been three years. Uh, and they thought that they could just get everyone to use Omni. But there's a lot of people that don't use their credit cards. They still use cash. And they have to use those old vending machines that are always broken. They steal customers' money. They steal customers' Metro cards. And it's been an extremely stressful situation for the customers and the staff. And as a result, there's a lot of fare evasion. That's part of the reason why so many people don't pay their fare. It's because they're being forced to use those broken old vending machines. Uh, I'm sorry, let me gather myself here. Station agents can assist the customers at the machines, uh, but we need the booth to go back to. We can't just be out there for hours. We have to have the safety of the booth, the heat, the air conditioning, and the equipment, and, and to be able to sit. So I have no problem with helping customers. I do it all the time. Uh, but I need to have my booth to go back to. And um, we need to be trained to sell and refill Omni cards in the booth because it's too inconvenient and impractical to expect customers to go to chain pharmacies and retail stores to buy Omni cards and refill them. They need to do it as they're getting on the train, as they're getting off the train. Uh, Higher-ups at the MTA need to open up communication with staff. As a reminder, speakers um, that are not unmuting, please, there will be a brief transition after you are called to speak. Please make sure that once your screen updates, your camera, if desired, and microphone are enabled before you begin your remarks. The next speaker is Evangeline Byards. Good evening, my name is Evangeline Byards. I'm a train operator. Um, I'm here to stand in solidarity with the, the stations department, the Department of Subways. Um, we're hearing tonight the overarching, resounding that the system is unsafe, that it's unsafe for station agents to be outside of the booth. Also, assaults and crime is up in the system. What you don't report to the public and what has not been made aware is the countless number of rapes that occur on the midnight, the attempted rapes that occur throughout the system on the midnight. The media does not put those, those situations out. Many of our workers are out on workers' compensation or even have controverted cases due to this fact. We need to ensure that the safety of all of our employees are made a top priority. 
Also, pregnant women cannot be outside of the booths, standing outside, being subject to vagrants, um, emotionally disturbed people, and things of that nature. There has to be some, some resolution. As these, um, the writing public is also resounding, is that this is unsafe. Safety is supposed to be the most important factor when it comes to dealing with these issues. It should not be that the, the, um, that the workers are being put um, in, in harm's way. Also, we know that station agents are the eyes and ears of the system. Anytime there is anything unsafe happening, it comes through the station agents are the ones that make the police and EMS aware most times. With them being outside the booths and being having to have their backs turned um, to the public while they're at systems, and not to even mention that the machines fail. They often do not work. And then they're going to have to deal with irate um, customers who are not able to access the system. Also, this does disenfranchise the disabled and the elderly who cannot utilize Omni. Thank you. The next speaker is Charlton Zasosa, followed by Juan Castillo. All right, everyone. Uh, good evening. I'm the president of Passengers United. And I am outraged today. One, on the public service notice that you put out, it said we can all speak for three minutes. It's posted in the notice. So I'm going to speak to an attorney about that. And number two, I just want to make something clear. Local 100 members did not vote on this yet. They did not have a chance to vote in stations on this. This was decided by corrupt union officials. Let's call it out for what it is. All these poor station agents, got sold out by management and sold out by the union presidents. And you know what? 11 people were killed in the subway system, 11, last year. And then there were about 400 suicides. This year, one person was killed, and we've had countless number of slashings. I go to all these incidents at Passengers United. That's what we do. And you know how many station agents have been hit with bricks, have been raped? There was a rape at the Rector Street station, I think. Some guy tried to attack the station agent. You know what's going to end up happening? This is going to cost the MTA more money because everyone's going to go on workers' comp. They're going to get assaulted. And guess what? The MTA is going to end up putting the clerks back in the boat. This is a bad idea. We at Passengers United are opposed to this. And, you know, you guys set up the station agents two years ago during COVID when you all decided not to do cash transactions in the booth. So this is not right. You guys are putting these poor station agents' lives in danger. And God forbid a station agent gets killed because of your incompetency. And you know what? The police officers, why is it that the police officers have to be in two, but a station agent can be outside by herself or himself with no gun, no weapon, no mace, nothing to defend themselves? Please, I implore the board. And the board members are not even here today. No one from executive management is here. These are just office staff members, guys. So definitely protest with the union. Please include. The next speaker is Juan Costillo, followed by Genera Ramirez. Is this on? Good. Okay, personally, I, uh, I, I am currently agree with the idea that taking out the subway booths, the station agents might, is clearly a bad choice. That you're, that you're turning, you're eliminating station booths without, while helping customers, giving money, take transaction money from Metro Current. Yeah, you're putting. Yeah, you're putting out. Yeah, you want to turn every spoof, uh, every, uh, select stations on the subway system into their own mini three Stone Street. You know the building downstairs in Lower Manhattan. I mean, personally, I agree. I agree with turning some of the stations, booths into their own mini three Stone Street. Boy, I don't like the idea of. Uh, how they can, how you take out, out the station agents out of their booths without any protection from those who, like like the mentally ill or or like dangerous criminals out there. And, and I understand 
then after hearing all the, I agree with what they're saying. Also, also for the for the select stations that turn in like they're all mini three stone stream. There should be like a like a two man operation. Like one half the station station remain inside the booth, and the other one to have empty arm like arm armed guards patrolling outside the gate. Also, it bring back subway trans transaction inside the booth since it's been out since the COVID pandemic. Also, at bring back some printed subway timetables back back at so at all the stations so we can get some timetables back. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, um, sorry. Is it on? Oh, sorry. Um, my name is Janaida, and I'm J uh, just a concerned New Yorker. Um, I echo like the sentiments that everybody else said strongly around safety. I think it's also like hard for people to make you know make these decisions if you're not on the train every day. I live in Brooklyn. I work uptown. I commute on the train every day. I don't think that like workers should be outside of the station. Um, two, I think that it is important for um, MTA workers to remain in the station just because that's you know that's their job to assist people at a specific location point. Um, the young man who mentioned that like it's hard to yell to the station. That's like I think that's logical. Like you can't find. It's going to be harder to find a worker um, if you need help. I think the Omni system is also like inefficient. Um, there, I experienced it for three years when I live in Portland, Oregon. I had to go to like a CVS to buy it, and sometimes they were closed. And then I had to figure out how to like pay the, for the train because you just have to buy these metro cards from these specific locations. I think to be able to, if the and the metro cars are going to be phased out there needs to be like a better process like taking care of all those small little gaps that would make people's everyday life really like inconvenient and uncomfortable Two, it's hard to use for elderly it's hard to use for immigrants um it's hard to just figure out even how to use it um a lot of young people um, i work with young people a lot of my students like we don't even know what would happen to student metro cards at that point i don't know if y'all know what would happen to student metro cards at that point um, another thought is, sorry, I'm just kind of nervous. Um, another thought is that to use the Omni system, um, you need a bank card, and a lot of like people just don't have them for like either lost documents or immigration status, or you know like dynamics in their households, um, and it's just inefficient. Like, what if you're like 12 and you need to get on the train? Like, how are you going to get on the train because you don't have like an Omni card, and then the, the MTA thing doesn't work or it only takes cash? You know, just. There are just too many inconsistencies and too many difficulties that have not been addressed for this um, decision to be made. Yep. Thank you. The next speaker is Shanath Sandanaram, followed by Jacob Tavares. Good evening, everyone. And you almost got my name right, so <laughs> kudos to that. Uh, uh, I know someone here said that uh, the, the people here don't know what it's going on. It's not from the executive board. Uh, but Mr. Compton here is extremely well-versed with revenue costing, and he's been the assistant director in revenue management. So I want to ask this question, is this really a good use of the tax dollars towards inherently putting people's lives at risk? I can read out a tweet that came out just a few minutes back saying, Northbound trains, and I want it to be part of the record here. So southbound queue and trains are delayed while we address a door problem on the trains at Atlantic Avenue Barclays Center. So where are the tax dollars going to go? Putting booth agents who play a vital role in the community, helping people, or towards, uh, are, or are they going to be putting the money towards fixing the system? The paint is peeling off. I travel from Brooklyn into the city. I only came because my office is literally three blocks away from here. So this is an ab absolute abuse of fiduciary responsibility that people have in putting booth agents at risk outside. And I can read another tweet as well, which talks exquisitely about someone being assaulted. People who are saying this is from the NTA's own official uh, subway system. Not bound, two or five trains are running with delays after NYPD responded on passengers being disruptive 
at Intervale Avenue. So is this going to be responsible in putting the booth agents out when there is so much of disagreements that are, I'll put it mildly, disagreements that are happening here and people being disruptive? Really? You really need to rethink your position before putting the safety of the booth agents. I absolutely oppose this move. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Jacob Tavares, followed by Jason Anthony. Hello? Okay. So I like to address my um, perspective as a student of the MTA system, and I've been using the MTA system for a long time. And the inconsideration of the students in the MTA system is a massive fault of the MTA, and I think this is very intentional with the Omni system, which would have to either require students to pay with their own money, which a lot of uh, low-income people might not be able to afford, or have to fair hop, which is actually being prosecuted more by the NYPD. But I also like to address the safety of the MTA workers during the booth. Having MTA workers outside the booth, especially in this crime spike after the post-pandemic world we live in, is especially dangerous now, taking very inconsiderate, step, inc uh, inconsiderate steps in caring about the safety of the working class people who actually manage the booths. I also believe that this is a fault of taxpayers having money spent on useless things, in such as Omni, which in consideration for some safety issues within the station are not minuscule compared to some safety issues with the stations. I see a lot of stations actually are falling apart with paint and as I was actually walking to this place, it was actually difficult to even find out about this hearing as a regular New Yorker who just wants insight about the new systems. And the new systems also don't take in consideration um, any people who might be disabled or have elderly issues or who might not be able to get a credit card or card for any reason whatsoever. I think this in consideration is not taken for by the MTA at all, especially the executives. Thank you. The next speaker is Jason Anthony. Good afternoon, everyone. Jason Anthony here. Uh, I'm going to speak in favor of the move because the MTA is behind and moving forward towards a more contactless uh, payment system. Because in reality, we, we need to move the station agents outside of the booths. Because in reality, we should look at other systems like, for example, Philadelphia, Chicago, Los Angeles, Seattle. They don't have station agents in their booths at all. For example, Chicago. They don't have station agents in their booths at all when I visited their station during my birthday weekend this past year. Uh, for example, Philadelphia. They already have their own system and in progress, uh, the SEPTA key. But we are behind regarding that. So we should adapt the contactless system and have our station agents outside the booth and interacting with passengers more and helping our people our passengers with disabilities and elders that are most that need help navigating our system when, when it comes to elevators being broken because they're, they are the most that need assistance. And regarding uh, fair uh, payments, we should have more capability to help them to recharge their cards not only have them come to Three Stone Street, but have the ability to assist them in all five boroughs. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. We have reached the final speaker on the list. We will call the names that um, were previously called but did not speak yet. As we make our way through the list, 
of speakers for the second time. Those present who have not spoken yet will be given an opportunity to comment if you pre-registered. The next virtual speaker is Skylar Hope. Are, are you hearing me? Yes. Perfect. So I want to ask, especially as a woman, especially as a woman who gets sexually harassed on the MTA all the darn time, multiple times in any given week, how, how does this affect the MTA's ability to keep this behavior at bay? Because your, your own procedures on your own website literally tell me that when safety and security issues happen, you say use a help point. And we just we just have discussions about how those are unresponsive. There's no one physically in that station. You, your own instructions say find an MTA employee or a police officer. But, again, is taking these employees out of the booth and having them around the station, does that increase their ability to patrol things? Or does it decrease my ability to find them? And finally, your own procedures say, call 911 if it's an emergency. Again, you probably don't actually want me calling 911 several times a week, every single time someone is sexually harassing me on the MTA. That's, that's part of why you need to have a reliable station presence of agents there to protect people, especially, especially women, especially gender queer folks, especially people at risk. And I also want to remind you that if people feel unsafe riding the system and, you know, they're going to swipe through the system less, you get less fare. That makes it hard to pay for all your infrastructure upgrades. Because I already see the shift where and I'm on the train late at night. Women don't like riding these trains because this stuff happens. And, and I, don't, I don't see how cutting our access to help will, will improve any of this. Thank you. Thank you. We have reached the end of the, the speaker list. We thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, the current time is 6.43 p.m., and this concludes our public hearing. We thank you again for your participation. Hello? Okay. We're going to be taking a recess um, and we'll resume shortly.
we will resume in one minute. We will now resume the public hearing. The next speaker virtually is Amanda Hernandez, followed by Robert Taylor. Hi, um, this is Station Agent Hernandez. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so we all know that eliminating the booths is a very dangerous situation, and we need to help these customers, especially the disabled and seniors. We have to do transactions inside the booths. Um, Omni should be implemented with us to do transactions. And also, the lunch reliefs are very important, as we know that lunch reliefs do cover um, any, you know, emergency that the station agent has. Also, hearings to go to 2 Broadway if they have any um, discrepancy or issues with MTA. So, I believe that having lunch relief is very important and useful. And as, as we all know, uh, the lunch reliefs do cover the 30-minute meal break. And that's also very important for the station agent to take their break. And during that time, the booth will not be alone. It will be with someone that could, you know, um, cover cover the job and cover also for customer assistance, any emergency that we could um, activate and have RCC and have any police and EMS. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Robert Taylor. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi. My name is Robert. Um, in regard to the station booth closings, I'm just wondering why the station agents cannot do the transactions in the booth. Why does everything have to be outside the booth? I understand certain systems do do, the, do away with no transactions in the booth, but I think here in New York, it's not safe for these guys to be outside. Um, and some of the stations are not safe per se, like 125th Street per se. 
Um, while I understand the concept of the idea of having these guys outside, I just don't think it's a good thing for the long term for job security because when things get tight, you're going to look to get rid of them. And most people, you know, they just want things done in the booth. They want their Metro card, or their Omni card or whatever, and go along their way. I'm just wondering, just ask you to reconsider having these guys stand outside and um, do this, especially with um, assaults and crime on the rise in the stations. Um, would ask that you reconsider um, having these guys outside and closing these bulls full time. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Alan Beller. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Hi, I'm sorry. Um, I have a couple of comments to make. Um, I'm a station agent, and having the station agents on the platform is going to get in the way of us performing our duties. Uh, we are told not to confront customers that are trying to jump the fare. If I'm in the booth, I'm supposed to yell over the microphone, pay your fare or don't go through the gate. But if I'm standing on a platform, I'm not supposed to engage any the customer any way like that. I'm supposed to just be non-confrontational. So you can't enforce paying the fare if you're standing in front of the turnstile. Second of all, as other people have mentioned, if the station has several platforms and a mezzanine, you may be on the uptown side when someone has a question on the downtown side. People will not know where you are, but if you have a booth, people know where the booth is. Now, we don't have tokens anymore. Why can't the booth be called an information center? Just call it the information center, call it the customer service center, whatever you want. People will know where to go. But if the, you have one agent wandering around a station, people will never find them. To do the job properly, you need to have more people than you have now. I don't think the MTA wants to hire additional people because they're being told to work on the platform. So, and I understand there'll be some booths that will now be manned by two people to perform the same service that we were doing before COVID with one person. So I think this idea is not thought through properly. And I think that many of the people who came up with the idea Please don't understand that you can't do your job standing on the platform. Plus you'll be in harm's way as other people have mentioned. Thank you. The next speaker is Caden Green. Recording in progress. Good night. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. We can hear you. Please proceed. I don't know what's happening. Hmm. 
Hello, can anybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you, ma'am. Oh, but I'm not hearing you. Okay, my first I must thank the MTA for I had uh, voiced my concern via email and uh, I have gotten a, a survey. I was sent a survey to do and I did the survey and I have seen improvement on the route to uh, JFK Airport, the B-15 JFK Airport to Udall. And I've seen much more improvement. One of the issues that I had was we would stand out there, I mean, like for 30 to 45 minutes before we get a B-15. And uh, while the other buses, the, 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 uh, the Q-3 and the, the Q-10, they were, they, they, I mean, they, they are consistent. I mean, in sequence, you see them. And the B-15 wasn't like that. And so it was a challenge for us as employees. And, and uh, to standing out there in the evenings, can't get a bus and see the, uh, these other buses coming and going. So I must say thank you. Really, really appreciate it. And I believe that my email was seen and somebody had adjusted that situation. So I must say thank you to that. Now, my other concern is I take the train at 4, between 4.15 to 4.20 in the mornings at First Avenue, that's in Manhattan. And that train, it leaves, it, I get off at New Lots. And uh, I am having a great challenge. In the morning, sometimes it is a, there's a notice or notices there to say that the train is running on the 8th Avenue side or on the Brooklyn bound side. side. Now, if I'm standing on the, eight, the Brooklyn bound, I go in and it said the train will be running on the 8th Avenue side. I'm over there waiting. And when I look, the train is over on the, Please the Brooklyn bound side. And this is not a one or a twi or twice or three. There are no additional speakers that are on virtually and in person. The current time is 7.03. This concludes the public hearing. Thank you for your participation. Good night.